So, we will continue with our uh, MD simulation uh, discussion and um, in particular we shall learn that uh, how to um, uh, use uh, a particular algorithm uh, namely the Verlet algorithm in order to calculate the position uh, of the particles uh, or generate a trajectory of the particles at all times that is uh, t and then t plus some small uh, increment and then again some increment and so on so that we can uh, entirely simulate the trajectory from some t equal to 0 so to some t equal to capital T which is uh, the full course of motion. The one that is most popular among this and it is a drift free um, higher order algorithm, uh, it is in fact it is a second order algorithm generator we will see that. Uh, it is uh, due to Verlet uh, which uh, appeared in the, the first uh, thing appeared in this paper by uh, Verlet in uh, 1967 uh, in uh, physical review. Uh, the title of the paper was Computer Experiments on Classical Fluids thermodynamical properties of Leonard Jones molecules and it is uh, volume 159 page 98 and it is in 1967. And in this uh, paper he discusses uh, the method and applications to uh, molecular dynamic simulations. <coughs> so, uh, just to remind ourselves that uh, we are going to discuss these equation of motion once again repeating what I said in the last discussion that uh, there is no uh, binding on us to use Newton's equation of motion instead Lagrange's or Hamilton's equation of motion could be used, but this is most uh, uh, common and familiar to <coughs> everybody that is why I am using this. And uh, so, this is something that we need to solve and uh, this is implicit uh, one does not have to say, but still I am mentioning it for the sake of completeness that we are talking about a conservative system. And uh, if you have read statistical uh, mechanics and uh, classical mechanics in your undergraduate syllabus, it means that the force that we are talking about here. Um, so, we are writing it in one dimension. So, may, maybe that will uh, sort of uh, uh, remove this force, uh, the vector on the force. But in any case, this is uh, we know that if it is a force actually uh, which is a vector. And uh, so, this means that uh, the curl of the force taken is to be 0. Okay. And this also means they are of course, related by what is called as a Stokes theorem is that the f dot d l should be equal to 0. And it is also the same statement is that the force can be written as a negative gradient of a scalar potential and this scalar potential in our case is uh, dependent only on the positions of the particle and uh, we have uh, talked about at least two or three kinds of potential one being the Leonard Jones. Um, the others are uh, say Morse potential or the Coulomb potential and so on. So, these are all equivalent statements and we are really talking about such systems where the energy is conserved and this is the last thing that energy is conserved. Okay. So, armed with this we will have to solve for the x as a function of t. And, um, um, so, in order to solve this uh, uh, numerically, this equation numerically, uh, Verlet suggested that we uh, develop an algorithm for uh, getting these positions at times t, t plus delta, t plus 2 delta and so on, where delta is a small increment of time. Very important to understand that delta actually holds the key to a successful um, numeric computation in terms of getting the total energy conserved and also the um, a numerical stability of the equation, the kind of solutions that we are looking for. So, let us just talk about the Verlet uh, algorithm or the Verlet uh, method. Okay. So, uh, this tells you that 
I am writing it in terms of uh, vector r, but it can be easily uh, you know uh, sort of uh, simplified to one dimension by just writing the vector r to uh, scalar x. So, this at t plus delta is obtained from a Taylor expansion about uh, the time t whatever is the initial time and this delta is a small increment of time. Now, I will take a dr dt uh, which is the first derivative uh, that is nothing but equal to v evaluated at this time t whichever time that we are talking about the initial time and uh, plus delta square by 2 factorial a t and plus a delta cube by 3 factorial. So, if you want you can put a 1 factorial here and this I am writing it as b of t something that we are not too familiar with in uh, dynamics which is the derivative of the acceleration. So, a is acceleration, v is velocity and b is the derivative of acceleration which we are calling it as b and we would neglect from uh, order delta 4 onwards and we will see that this is actually accurate up to delta to the power 4. So, let us just write down all these notations. So, v of t is the velocity a of t being the acceleration and uh, b of t is derivative of acceleration. Okay. Now, this is of course, the Taylor expansion of these uh, quantity r uh, t plus delta about uh, r at about at r equal to t and um, uh, one can do a little bit of rearrangement of this and uh, one can write this as <coughs> r of t plus delta equal to twice of r t minus r. Let us uh, uh, write down the other term as well. So, this we will have to write uh, r uh, t minus delta as well pardon me for this mistake, I have uh, skipped one. Uh, so, again the r at t minus delta can also be written down uh, which is uh, <coughs> is r of t and a minus delta by 1 factorial v of t. Uh, plus delta square by 2 factorial a of t minus delta cube by 3 factorial b of t and plus order delta to the power 4. Now, adding let us call this as 1 and this as 2 or let us call this as just uh, for let us call this as a and b because this is not the um, equation that we are looking for. So, adding a and b one can uh, write with a little bit of rearrangement of terms. So, this is like r t plus delta equal to 2 r t minus r t minus delta plus delta square a of t. So, uh, you see that when you add the odd terms cancel, odd terms in delta they cancel and one lands up with only the even terms in delta and since we have uh, <coughs> omitted terms from delta 4 onwards, so we got a delta square term and so on. So, uh, this is, uh, so error is uh, of the order of delta to the power 4 and this is called as a local <coughs> error. Uh, one important problem with the mo uh, molecular dynamics sim simulation is the following that uh, the global error in MD
is always larger than the local error. So, this is a local error because we are just talking about one time step. So, if you evolve the system in one time step going from you know r of t to r of t plus delta, one actually uh, picks up uh, error which is of the order of delta to the power 4, whatever is your delta, delta is up to you to choose a value of the increment of time that you want the system to you know uh, between two successive time, this is the time interval that I want. So, it is completely up to you and uh, this uh, error is of the order of delta 4. But when you actually do a simulation over several deltas and uh, we actually evolve the system from say t equal to 0 to t equal to some capital T where capital T um, <coughs> has a, a very large number of deltas that is a capital T equal to say n delta uh, where n is a very large number and then uh, these errors ideally we want them to either remain same or the even uh, we uh, uh, I mean could be more ambitious and want the error to reduce. However, what happens in this particular case is that the error does not reduce in fact it grows that the global error uh, is of the order of delta square which is larger than uh, delta to the power 4 because delta is small. Okay. And let me show you that how uh, this thing um, arrives, uh, one is arrived at this uh, global error and uh, so we pr present a derivation, a simple derivation for that. So, we uh, will uh, prove this that, uh, so proof of global error is of the order of delta square. Okay. So, local error as we have just learned x t plus delta is of the order of uh, delta to the power 4, let us just write equal to delta to the power 4. So, uh, error x t plus 2 delta equal to x of t plus 2 delta x of t plus order delta square plus order delta to the power 4. Uh, this uh, delta square of course, involves acceleration, but we do not uh, we are not writing it explicitly because uh, you know they. <coughs> so, this, this term is like delta square a t and so on uh, or a t plus delta. Uh, so, this would be this term, uh, but we do not need it that is why we are not writing it here. So, this is that term, but anyway we are uh, neglecting terms from here onwards. So, this thing can be written in a slightly tricky way or rather with a bit of a manipulation, we can write it as uh, twice of uh, x uh, t plus delta uh, minus x of t and then again this term let me write it as order delta square order delta to the power 4. So, you see that um, the error in positions So, this error for this quantity actually goes as error for uh, <coughs> you know uh, this thing and this is uh, the error in acceleration which is a derived quantity which we are not considering here. So, the error in position would be uh, simply equal to, so error uh, x t plus 2 delta is uh, 2 error um, x t plus delta um, uh, and um, error um, x of t and each one of them is actually uh, of the order of uh, delta to the power 4. Uh, so, I am writing it plus sign because these uh, errors are always additive. So, this is 3 order of delta to the power 4. So, this is the um, error at this t plus 2 delta level 
And similarly, if one looks at um, error at x t plus 3 delta. So, this is a 6 order uh, delta 4 m. Um, uh, so, this is just by induction. So, this O is of the order of. Okay. So, this O is of the order of. And similarly, error for x t plus 4 delta, it is equal to 10 order of delta 4. So, this is just by uh, similar you know um, <coughs> manipulation here, error x t plus 5 delta it is equal to 15 order delta to the power 4 and so on. Okay. So, there will be a uh, number of them 4 delta, 5 delta, 6 delta, 7 delta and all that and these all these numbers would get added up. Now, you see that what you are adding up is actually terms such as as you go. Uh, so, delta comes with a term 1, 2 delta comes with a term 3, 3 delta comes with 6, 4 delta comes with 10, 5 delta comes with 15. So, if you follow it like this, then you get a uh, by induction what one gets is that for the error uh, x t plus n delta, okay, this is n into n plus 1 by 2 order delta to the power 4. Okay. Now, you see uh, for uh, n equal to the 0th step that is the first one. So, uh, or rather uh, for the first step one gets um, uh, <coughs> 1 into 1 plus 1 2, 2 divided by 2 will cancel. So, we will get a 1 for 2 delta so n equal to 2 put n equal to 2. So, 2 into 2 plus 3 which is 6 divided by 2 is 3 and for n equal to 3 it is 3 into 4 by 2. So, it is uh, uh, 12 divided by 2 is 6 and similarly it goes on. Okay. So, this is the uh, by induction. So, this can be written as uh, n square over 2 plus n over 2 and uh, there is a order delta to the power 4. All right. So, uh, now consider the global error in going from x t to x of t plus capital T, where capital T is the say the final time, where uh, capital T is nothing but n delta or rather this also gives delta equal to t over n. So, this tells you that the error um, the global error rather which is picked up from all the errors. Uh, so, this is capital T plus uh, small t plus capital T. This is equal to um, t square over 2 delta square plus a t over 2 delta and uh, this is order delta to the power multiplied by order delta to the power 4. So, there is a delta square and there is a delta. So, the leading one leading is of the order of delta square. Okay. So, the global error is actually large as compared to the local error. So, they pick up errors at every stage and if you add them up it uh, becomes uh, <coughs> uh, of the order of delta square. And uh, so, this uh, basically this in m d uh, the global error is of the order of delta square this is what I have said also and uh, that is why the Verlet um, integrator is known as the second order integrator. Okay. Now, uh, there is a bit of a problem with this uh, version of uh, these Verlet algorithm that we are talking about. Uh, 
what is important is that uh, we are not getting the velocities which uh, may also be needed uh, for a reason that we want to calculate the energy and the kinetic energy crucially needs information about the velocity. And here we are not getting the velocity, but we are only getting the, um, the positions. And of course, uh, the velocities can be determined uh, using this uh, divided difference formula, which is uh, Vt plus delta minus V t minus delta and so on divided by 2. But we still have to get this V t plus delta and V t minus delta. Uh, these will correspond to positions x t plus delta and x t minus delta and so on. Okay. So, uh, it is important to get this velocities. Let me just go back once and uh, call this equation as equation 1 and maybe box it because we are going to need this equation for several of our discussion. So, this is the position um, <coughs> uh, evolution of the particles and uh, this has to be now combined with the velocity and there are several algorithms and uh, we are going to talk about two, three of them, but mostly going to use the uh, velocity verlet uh, method. Okay. So, uh, it is important that we also know the velocity along with the positions of the particle at x, uh, x at t, uh, v at t also needs to be uh, known. So, to overcome this uh, difficulty, a uh, number of uh, algorithms have been um, <coughs> mentioned or proposed and uh, let us see some of them. So, we will start with the important one for us which is the velocity verlet algorithm. Okay which is a recurrence relation uh, of a combined x and t. Uh, so, here the r t plus delta. <coughs> so, this is a double recurrence relation. Okay. So, uh, it is for both, so double is for both position and velocity. So, r t plus delta, uh, this is written as r t plus delta v t plus delta square by 2 uh, a t. Okay. So, this is for the position and for the velocity, it is v at t and delta by 2 uh, a t plus a t plus delta and so on. So, let us call them as equation 2 and equation 3, where the a t plus delta is computed from the updated positions. r t plus delta. Okay. So, this is uh, important, uh, this is called as a velocity verlet algorithm. So, let us take an example. So, take the simple harmonic oscillator and the equation of motion is given by d 2 x d t 2 x is a function of t, it is equal to minus k by m x of t. Just to remind you that uh, the this k is equal to the force constant. So, it is a Hooke's law pretty much that is written, which says that f is equal to minus k x. So, as uh, the force, uh, this is the restoring force. Uh, the, so, once when uh, a spring or uh, <coughs> you know an elastic object is uh, displaced or stretched from his uh, natural position x equal to 0 by a distance x, the restoring force that acts on the system is proportional to the displacement. So, as you displace the, uh, the part more, 
a part of that elastic body more. So, uh, there will be a larger restoring force and so this goes as f going to x and because it is restoring there is a negative sign there and uh, it depends on the material. So, if you have uh, a, an elastic material of one kind as compared to an elastic material of another kind, you will have a different k value associated with it which is called as an elastic constant or a spring constant or a force constant all these names uh, go with it uh, almost uh, synonymously. And this is the equation of motion that one gets. So, the updated positions x t plus delta are obtained um, according to equation 1. So, let me uh, remind you of equation 1 here uh, which is r t plus delta uh, equal to 2 r t minus r t minus delta and uh, plus delta square uh, a of t. So, that is the uh, that is equation 1 and we will uh, sort of we have written it earlier, but now written it uh, here just for you to follow better. And this is uh, same as now we are doing it in one dimension. So, it is a x t plus delta it is equal to twice of x t minus x t minus delta those are the first two terms. Now, for the last term it is easy because your acceleration is nothing but minus k by m x. So, we will write that down instead of the acceleration here. So, it is a minus k by m x of t. Now, you see that uh, you can combine it with this and write it as 2 minus uh, delta square k over m and x of t and minus x of t minus delta. So, uh, the trajectories are computed at t equal to 0, t equal to delta, 2 delta, 3 delta and so on and so which are termed as x at 0, x at delta, x at 2 delta, x at 3 delta and so on. So, this is the way the trajectories are generated in successive times. As I told that delta is a small increment of time and uh, this increment of time is uh, uh, so, so, the positions are calculated at each of these increment values and uh, this is how things proceed and uh, the velocities of course, can be obtained by the, uh, <coughs> by the finite difference or the divided difference method. And uh, <coughs> so, if you do the same thing uh, with the velocity verlet, uh, so this is just the, the position uh, formula which is equation 1 and doing the same thing with the velocity verlet so uh, these are uh, applying equations 2 and 3 these are right here which you can see that rt plus delta equal to rt plus delta vt and delta square by uh, 2 um, and um, a t where uh, v t plus delta equal to v t and then delta by 2 a t and a t plus delta. So, these are the acceleration computed at those values. So, let us use them and can uh, we can write this as 1 minus delta square by 2 k by m we have already shown the acceleration is this. So, we combine it here and then there is a delta v t. Uh, just be a little careful there is not delta v is not uh, this delta multiplied by v. So, delta is a small increment in time. If you are feeling uncomfortable you can write delta to be equal to delta t uh, which means that it is a small increment of time. Now, uh, the velocity expression is written as uh, v of t and a minus delta by 2 
k over m x of t plus x of t plus delta. So, these are the two uh, recurrence relations that we have to <coughs> compute for uh, you know. So, these will generate um, pairs of x 0 v 0, x delta v delta, um, x 2 delta v 2 delta and so on. Okay. So, uh, now it is worthwhile that we talk about uh, a couple of more algorithms and show that how, why they are uh, you know why worldlet is uh, probably most commonly used. Uh, somehow those uh, algorithms are also popular and uh, people have used it and uh, so they are known as so two more algorithms. One is called as a lip frog algorithm, and the second one is called as a Beeman's algorithm. Okay. So, we briefly describe them without derivation. So, let us talk about the leaf frog algorithm. Okay. So, let us see what this is. The positions and the velocities are computed via by this um, there is a position uh, generator and uh, the velocity generator is given by this. So, in this algorithm, the velocities are first calculated at time t equal to <coughs> or uh, at time t plus delta by 2. Um, and these are used to calculate, used to calculate positions at um, t plus delta. So, you see that uh, they are not calculated at the same time. So, the velocity is calculated at this time t plus delta by 2 at a later time the position is calculated at t plus delta. Now, again the velocity will be calculated at t plus 3 delta by 2 and uh, then one will go and calculate the positions at t plus 2 delta. So, they are leap frogging, they are actually leaping the velocity is uh, leaping over the position and then the position is taking over in the next uh, round and then the uh, velocity is taking over in the next round and so on. So, they are not calculated uh, together. Uh, however, uh, one can actually approximate uh, to calculate the velocity from uh, this expressions which is v t minus delta by 2 plus v t plus delta by 2. And so, this is the velocity. So, if one calculates the um, r at t, then one can also get the velocity as t, but this is only an approximate expression and uh, 
<coughs> really uh, uh, one is leaping uh, ahead of the other. Of course, it has uh, some uh, advantages that it is uh, a fast algorithm and uh, one gets uh, uh, a lot of uh, data generated within a shorter span of time, but they are not uh, pair wise they are not calculated at the same time. Let us look at the second one called the Beeman's algorithm. Okay. So, this is uh, similar to Worldlet, and so this is written as slightly more complicated expressions equal to R t plus delta V t plus two third a t delta square minus one sixth delta square a t minus delta and v t plus delta it is equal to v t plus delta v t plus one third a t delta square plus five sixth delta a t and minus one sixth delta a t minus delta and so on. Uh, so, the advantage of this algorithm is that uh, it provides a more accurate expression for the position and the velocities. However, the disadvantage is that as you see that there are more complex expressions to be coded or rather they are more uh, difficult than the worldlet algorithm. In any case, there are uh, probably more algorithms for uh, generating the x at t plus delta and v at t plus delta, but uh, we shall be mostly using the worldlet uh, <coughs> integrator or the worldlet generator. So, uh, let us look at the worldlet method. And in particular, talk about the energy conservation and the numerical stability. So, let us take again a specific example. Let us take the example of simple harmonic oscillator which is now written as d 2 x d t 2 equal to minus omega square x, where we write omega square equal to k over m. And uh, for oscillatory solutions, we really want to retain the negative sign. So, omega square should really be positive and uh, which these things are of course, positive because k is your um, force constant and m is your mass both are positive definite quantities. And uh, we can write down an ansatz for the solutions namely y at t equal to some amplitude y 0 exponential i alpha t. So, this is the uh, answers of this form. Uh, so, for the discrete evolution of, uh, <coughs> so use Verlet reference. So, y at t plus delta it is equal to 2 minus omega square delta square y at t minus y t minus delta. So, this will give a handle of uh, how far the solution y that is uh, proposed as an ansatz is going to be close to the actual true solution, because we know the true solution is of the form exponential i omega t. See one thing uh, to be noted with a bit of a care that is omega is actually the frequency the actual frequency, true frequency and alpha is the frequency for uh, 
from the ansatz or from computation. Okay. So, they have to have a relationship uh, amongst each other or they should be related in such a way that we should not miss the oscillatory solution and get a solution which is you know dying solution or uh, some uh, hyperbolic solutions and so on. Okay. So, this is important that uh, there has to be a relation and one has to really find out the relation and uh, this uh, is also needed. So, we uh, really need this for what is the value of delta such that a energy conservation is obeyed b or rather 2 one gets an oscillatory solution which means and no unphysical states or unphysical solutions So, let us see what uh, is meant by that and uh, what has, has got to do with this uh, value of alpha. So, this uh, you know the alpha should be actually um, capturing the fastest oscillations in the problem at least that is what has to be ensured and let us see how we ensure that. <coughs> that. So, we should not get a non oscillatory solution so to say. So, uh, if we uh, so, this is uh, ansatz, uh, so let us call this as equation C and uh, this is the true solution is D. So, uh, plug in the ansatz into e equation of motion. So, plug, uh, plug in the ansatz into equation 1 if you remember what equation 1 is which involves that x t plus delta in terms of x t minus delta and the, um, <coughs> a, um, the acceleration. So, it is a y 0 do it carefully exponential i alpha t it is i alpha delta minus 2 minus omega square delta square uh, plus exponential minus i alpha delta this is equal to 0. So, this is the, um, the, <coughs> the position uh, generator from the Verlet scheme and uh, so this gives that exponential i alpha delta minus 2 minus omega square delta square plus a exponential minus i alpha delta that has to be equal to 0 and hence the omega square delta square is 4 sin square uh, alpha delta by 2. Um, so, very important thing here is that see if I rewrite this as uh, delta square uh, equal to 4 delta square equal to 4 over omega square sin square alpha delta by 2. Now, you see that this can take maximum value which is 1. So, it is the, the extreme values are plus minus 1, but that will be violated uh, if your delta square uh, for it becomes greater than 4 over omega square. So, if that ratio, so if I, if I bring this here and if this ratio becomes delta square becomes greater than 4 by omega square, uh, then there will be no real value of alpha that would satisfy this identity. Okay. So, important statement no real identity above uh, when uh, delta square is greater than 4 omega square. 
So, this of course, shows that two things, one is that in the numeric computation, omega delta equal to 2 or delta equal to 2 over omega denotes the boundary between the physical regime which is oscillatory and unphysical regime which is non oscillatory. So, this tells that what should be my smallest time scale that I should choose in order to get a numerically stable solution and also uh, very importantly the average energy to be constant. Uh, <coughs> so, which is a requirement for a conservative system. Okay. So, we cannot just choose anything. So, what is uh, important is this that uh, to understand that this is not an artifact of the numerical precision. Finite precision numerics. So, very important statement that let us make here that choice of the time step delta should be such that the fastest oscillations of the system should be captured by the numerics. I have written it in small font, but I hope you will be able to see it. Let me circle this very important statement or rather box it. Okay. So, this is very important. Mostly in cases where uh, one has a sinusoidal uh, driving say for example, or a periodic driving of a system and uh, say there are transitions going on between various states of a system, uh, various states means various energy levels of the system. And uh, so, there is a natural um, frequency of oscillation or there is a natural frequency of these transitions and along with basically because there is a the periodic driving. So, there is also this period or rather the frequency of the driving force that is also kind of coming to play. So, one has a fast motion and one has a slow motion. In fact, uh, in the MD simulation the delta should be such that the fastest motions uh, or rather the fast of these two motions, faster of these two motions should be captured in the simulation. Otherwise, it will lead to unphysical solutions and will not give rise to something that we uh, want to <coughs> um, you know uh, sort of display. So, let us look at um, a situation again at the SHO and um, <clears throat> so just write down the equation of motion. So, take k equal to 1 m equal to 1 and so on which makes of course, your omega equal to 1. So, in this units 
the total energy takes a form So, this is the potential energy half m omega square x square all are equal to 1. So, coefficient is 1 and half m v square because m equal to 1. So, it is half v square and so on. So, let us show three things. Uh, in fact, this is from a book. Uh, uh, we will show you the results from a book. So, uh, this is uh, we will show uh, three things. So, one is the trajectory, the numerical trajectory. and compare with the uh, true trajectory. Uh, 2 is the phase space that is the space of position and velocity. So, phase space plots. So, it is a constant energy rather the constant energy plots. And third is total energy or uh, as a function of t, as a function of time. Okay. And uh, uh, we show this and understand that as delta is increased beyond a certain value, one uh, gets poorer and poorer select, uh, I mean solutions and uh, beyond a certain value of delta one gets very unphysical solutions. So, let, let us, uh, so this is the solution. So, you see that this is the trajectory part. So, this is the trajectory, uh, the first column the trajectory with points, the numerical ones are with points. And uh, true trajectory, true with solid lines. Okay. So, this is from a book by P. V. Panat on statistical mechanics. Okay. So, you will find this um, <coughs> um, on page 370. Okay. All right. So, let us uh, see this that you see the uh, the solution is uh, pretty much following for t equal to a time step equal to 0 0.1 a true trajectory is uh, cos of t and uh, numerical one is very close very close close to true so you see that they are all falling one uh, these uh, circles are falling on the uh, straight lines or the rather the <coughs> the bold lines continuous lines and this the second column actually correspond to the what we said is the basically the phase space or the constant energy contours So, it is exactly a circle it is uh, and then as you increase this uh, delta to 0 0.5. So, this is uh, the initial one is delta equal to 0 0.1 uh, we pretty much get uh, you know the same trajectory here with these uh, because we have increased delta to 0 0.5 the frequency of the points or the number of points have gone down. 
but they are still showing a fairly good cosine t behavior and the phase space is also a circle. Now, the last column, the third column is basically the total energy uh, E as a function of T which is half x square uh, and plus v square. All right. So, this is showing just a sharp line at half at a value half which is these two are there as a function of time and time goes from 0 to some 500 time steps and they are still at that value 0.5. At these uh, larger time step it uh, the even though the phase looks phase space trajectory looks circular uh, the this thing the energy actually have broadened and uh, uh, one uh, if one increases the time step to about 0.1 uh, rather 1 that is 0 0.95 one gets uh, uh, much lesser points and uh, they can still probably be approximated as some uh, cosine t lines because most of these are falling in this cosine t. However, the phase space trajectory is becoming or the constant energy contour is becoming a little elliptic. Not only that the total energy is spreading uh, rather it is deviating the from the value half and it is spreading over say say from 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 and so on. And then uh, for a larger time step 1.9 which is very large one gets a phase space trajectory to be a flat ellipse. And not only that you see that the energy is undergoing a lot of fluctuation and the energy is not uh, you know as a function of time uh, the energy is changing quite a bit it is not a value. So, it is uh, from 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 uh, it is having a variation and it is having some kind of a sinusoidal variation there. So, that tells that as uh, you know going from delta equal to 0 0.1 to delta equal to 1.9 uh, one has actually the uh, solutions have sufficiently deteriorated and uh, beyond that that is beyond uh, rather great for delta to be greater than 1.9 uh, there is no uh, solution that is oscillatory and hence cannot be an acceptable solution or a numerically stable solution. So, we reject we have to reject all these solutions. So, in this we clearly show that how delta plays an important role or the time step that you choose plays an important role in deciding on the Verlet trajectory that we have <coughs> studied in this uh, section or in this discussion. So, it is important for us to understand that delta should catch or capture the fastest oscillations going on in the system and if it does not then of course, we get solutions which could be unphysical and uh, maybe something that uh, we cannot trust on it.